Hey guys, Caitlin here. And for this week's YouTube video, I thought we would talk about supraventricular tachycardia. And um, that can be any rhythm above the ventricles, so that's very broad, but I'm specifically talking about paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. Um, I had a patient last night that had a history of it, and it reminded me of one of my first patients when I started my fellowship that had SVT. It was like my first or second day. Um, the nurse came over to us, to our little doc box, and she was like, what is this? Um, do I need to do anything for this? It was a super fast heart rate. It looks really scary on EKG. And we were just like, no, bring it back. Let's do some things. Um, and it was actually quite funny because, um, of course, we, we'll talk about treatment in a little bit, but of course we tried some vagal maneuvers with him first. Um, there's many different kinds of vagal maneuvers with him. I tried to as this big guy and I was like, okay, hey man, why don't you take this syringe and try and make the stopcock blow forward? So I tried to make him blow into this syringe and make the stopcock move forward. It's pretty much impossible, but he sure did try and it failed. Um, and then we were just like telling him, oh, okay, well the next step is we, we also tried to get him to bear down, that didn't work. And then so we were explaining to him the next step is going to be some medication. So we are walking out of the room and one of the nurses accidentally um, dropped the bed too quickly instead of just, you know, lowering it like that. And it scared him enough to where he actually bared down and he snapped out of his rhythm. So that was really funny. Um, and so I want to share that story with you guys. And then I wanted to talk about how to recognize and manage SVT. So let's get started. So this rhythm is the most common rhythm in the young and healthy, um, otherwise no comorbidities. Um, the majority of patients that I've seen this in have been 20 to 30 year olds, but it can be seen in infants as well. Um, and there's two different subtypes. There's AVNRT and there's AVRT. Um, I won't get into the difference between those two. Um, you really can't see much of a difference on an EKG and the treatment's gonna be the same thing acutely. These patients will mostly present with your chest pain, shortness of breath, palpitations will be a big complaint, maybe some fatigue, diaphoresis. Infants might complain, complain. The infants might have poor feeding, failure to thrive, tachypnea, irritability. Um, so really pay attention to this. And then if it's really bad, some patients can have um, hemodynamic um, instability and or syncope. So it's always good to get an EKG on anyone that has syncope because they could be an SVT. Um, always consider this with any of those symptoms um, and then go from there. When it comes to the history when you're asking these patients um, what brought them in today, um, they're going to complain of those symptoms that I talked about earlier, but it's going to be a sudden onset. They're going to be like, oh, I was doing this, and then all of a sudden, all these symptoms began. And um, the difference between this and sinus tachycardia is going to be something like an, an insidious onset for sinus tachycardia. The most common cause of this is usually dehydration. Um, and these patients are going to have P waves in front of the QRS. So SVT, you most likely will not see P waves. Um, it's just going too fast and or you might see retrograde P waves. Um, so you'll just see one big um, T wave, P wave mixed together and then a QRS and I'll show you an EKG in a little bit. Um, and then definitely consider SVT if this patient is withdrawing from alcohol or they're using any other stimulant drugs and then all of a sudden they suddenly felt um, these symptoms and um, also consider this with anyone who has thyroid disease and or electrolyte abnormalities and those are also things that you're going to want to evaluate for with anyone with SVT to really get down to why they jumped into this rhythm. So this is an EKG of a proxismal supraventricular tachycardia. And as you can see, there are no discernible P waves here. In sinus tachycardia, you will probably see some P waves. In SVT, you'll see um, either no P waves or either retrograde P waves. And the rate will be at around 150 for an adult and around 220 for an infant. 
Now, when it comes to the treatment of these patients, um, you're going to want to act pretty quickly. These patients are pretty uncomfortable and that rate is going pretty quickly. Um, so you're going to want to look at if they are stable or unstable. And I like to think of this as their vital signs. So if their vital signs are stable, um, their blood pressure isn't dropping, um, they appear well, they're awake, then you can start with your vagal maneuvers. And there are many different vagal maneuvers. You'll probably develop your favorite one. I like blowing into the syringe one. Um, you can also apply cold packs to the face. There are specific ones for infants that you can try. Um, bearing down is always a great one or dropping the bed um, to scare the patient is always one to try, which actually worked with me. And then um, if that doesn't work, you, which actually vagal maneuvers work 25% of the time, so always try it. And if that doesn't work, you can always go to your medicine. And this is adenosine in adults, you're doing six megs um, IV push and then go up to 12 if it doesn't work. Um, infants, it's weight based, 0.1 meg per keg. Um, and then you can always try calcium channel blockers and or diltiazem. Um, but that is only if the patient is stable. If they are unstable, blood pressure dropping, um, you are going to want to quickly synchronize cardiovert them. Um, and the joules are 0 0.5, 0 0.1 per keg. Uh, if that doesn't work, you just go up from there. Now, the disposition of these patients um, can vary. If if they are hemodynamically unstable and you had to synchronize cardio over at them, I don't think it's an, a bad idea to admit them to cardiology and let them hand or dispo from there. Um, they do not always need to be admitted. I would always touch base with cardiology and just tell them what happened and they can make the decision. But some of these patients do go home, um, tell them to avoid all stimulant based um, uh, caffeine, um, drugs and avoid alcohol because withdrawal with alcohol is a stimulant and then um, follow up with a cardiologist from there. Some of these patients may need um, ablation to prevent further episodes of SVT. And that's it guys. Thanks for listening. Um, I hope this helped you manage SVT patients. They're very interesting. They're quite fun in my opinion because you get to do things very quickly and you just kind of run down the list. Um, I enjoy my SVT patients so I hope you do too and I hope this helped you manage them in the future. See you next week guys.